And welcome back to Virtual Car Wash Expo. I'm Bob Fox coming to you live from the Car Wash College classroom. I am joined by some luminaries in the car wash industry. Uh, every time I see these these folks, it just uh, they're, they're just such good people to, to spend some time with. And uh, Justin Alford, I'd bring you in first from Benny's Chain out in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Just just where you have nine locations right now. We got nine locations, three convenience stores, five oil changes, and a lot of cars. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to have you. Next up, we got Mr. Marcus Kittrell from Mark One in Birmingham, Alabama area. Marcus is part now with what Mammoth Holdings and what thirty plus locations now, Marcus. Yep, we have seven in Birmingham, thirty-eight total across the uh, southeast and in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. All right, and good so, to have you. Uh, busy, busy. Good to have you here as well. Next up, we got Trent Walter out of uh, the Cleveland, Ohio area. Trent runs 14 car washes under three different flags. Trent, uh, tell us about your operation a little bit quickly. Yes, we run an investment model. And uh, again, we do have three different groups and uh, currently running 14 locations with uh, several more to come. All right, good deal. And then we got John Thompson, JT, out in the beautiful state. Where are you calling from, JT? You got mountains uh, in the background, but... Yeah, I'm in Park City, Utah. Oh, okay, real good. Um, I know you guys are based out of Arizona, but you don't have any car washes there yet. But where, nope. do, you, where do you have all your car washes at? Go car uh, wash. Yeah, so we have a total of 21 in Kansas City, and then we have four in Las Vegas with one more coming. All right. We also have Mike Ford back with us to answer any more questions regarding uh, what's going on with the SBA. So quickly, before we get into all that, uh, Jim McClyman – uh, graciously donated a G&G light to give away. Jim, you want to tell the people what we're giving away? Yeah, so it's it's actually your choice. So uh, you can pick from one of My the- My choice? No, 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 no. The guy who wins <laughs> or woman who wins. Come on. Uh, no, so you, when you win, you get to uh, pick either one of the new uh, G&G Rainbow Maxes or you can pick any of the single color Maxes. So uh, you'll All definitely right. enjoy it. How much, what kind of retail value is that? Uh, between 1,000 and uh, 900, which one of them is 900, one of them is 1,000. So it kind of depends on what you need in your site. All right, and the winner of the G&G Light is Ingrid Klen. So Ingrid Klen, looks like she's local, 561 area code. I will right. be giving Ingrid a call here shortly. She Jim wants can to... just take that right over to her. Yeah, Jim, you can drop it off on your way home tonight. <laughs> Lord knows I have nothing else going on. I'm in. Let's do it. Better than, better than social distancing. I like it. All right, guys, we all know why we're here and not in San Antonio. Um, so we appreciate you guys coming on today. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Paul and let Paul say his hellos to you guys, and then I'll come back and ask you some questions. Thanks, Bob. You know, um, Justin, Marcus, JT, Trent, when I called you guys, first of all, I knew when I start off a conversation and say I need a favor, uh, I knew unless you guys had something uh, with a serious conflict, you were going to say yes to me. And I think that's what's interesting about our industry that if people from outside our industry may never understand is just how close the personal relationships go. So when somebody says, I need a favor, you know, we always start off, yeah, of course, what do you need? Uh, especially in times like this, we're all going through something that's, uh, I don't know that even challenging is a, is a good word to use, but just, I'm going to start with you because I've been, can't help but watch the news, right? Which is uh, probably a mistake at this point, I'm watching a little too much, making me a little crazy. Louisiana. A real hot spot. Um, tell me a little bit about what you're going through there. Well, I mean, a lot of it is centered in New Orleans. So um, the majority of the cases are, I think Baton Rouge is over 600 cases now. And um, we're about an hour from New Orleans. But uh, yeah, I mean, every time you turn on the news and I just got a message on my phone that the governor's speaking right now to update everybody again. And you're not sure what to think of it. You know, we um, uh, fortunately, we've been under a stay at home order for the last couple of weeks. And fortunately, we've been able to keep the exteriors open. And uh, we're washing a few cars, but business is definitely off. It's definitely taking its toll. It's definitely not a normal, beautiful April Monday. But, um, hey, we're here. We're trying to stay open for the staff. We're trying to stay open for the customers. We've had some great comments, too, people saying, hey, thank you all for staying open. We didn't do need clean cars. The Uber drivers, the taxi cab, policemen, all of those are coming through. And we do. I think we do a great service to, to get germs off cars and make them clean when they're going down the road. And hopefully this ends soon and we get back to normal times. That's what we're all looking forward to. I couldn't agree with you more. You know, Trent, I see what you're going through. Tell us a little bit about what's going on in Ohio. 
Uh, the biggest issue we're seeing right now is from health department to health department in each county, uh, one saying, hey, you can be open, one saying you can't. Um, so we've gone ahead and just shut all of our washes down, uh, told our employees to remain safe. Um, and we've had a few of our uh, managers, supervisors coming in trying to help do some maintenance and, and make sure everything uh, stays good and operational. Um, we're really just kind of sitting back and looking for a little more guidance from the governor right now. He uh, actually has a board that's going to start tomorrow and start looking at businesses that need some clarity of whether they're essential or not essential. And he's hopefully going to get us a decision here. Uh, but right now we just, we, we kind of shut things down, um, you know, and just told our employees to, to follow the Ohio stay at home order. You know, I guess that's what makes it so challenging too, is you know, Justin, you're saying your governor speaking, yours is changing. We don't have clear direction, you know, and it's changing not only daily, hourly, and we don't know a date certain when this is going to end. So, you know, it makes it even that much more uh, harder, harder to deal with. JT, tell me about what you're going through. Uh, you know, it's a daily fight everybody's going through, right? It is uh, health department to health department. Uh, in Kansas, we've been visited by some sheriffs. So on those sites, we've actually shut those down. But we're fighting every day trying to stay open. So, you know, Vegas uh nevada was one of the first states to do the stay-at-home order and fortunately for us that one that's you know those sites have been uh not bothered and we've actually you know been holding you know pretty strong on numbers all things considered kansas city and missouri it is you know definitely location to location so it's a it's a daily daily battle for us for sure okay marcus what about you what are you seeing yeah, same. We, we still have all 38 locations open. Um, we had a couple shut down in Georgia and, uh, you know, we had to get some attorneys involved to get back open. Um, but uh, right now we're 38 for 38. Um, and we're doing all the social distancing. We're, pra we're doing all the things that have been asked to do by the by the our local city and state and federal, you know, uh, government. So um, our, our plan is to to fight the fight, stay open, um, and you know, plead our case when we need to. No, oh, I hear you. In fact, when I called you the other day, I, I got to tell you, Marcus, you made my day. The conversation they had with Marcus was extremely positive, and um, he didn't know it, but I needed it. You know, with what we're going through, uh, it's an emotional roller coaster. And I know in, in our particular case, and, and I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer to this today, but I know for me, like you were saying, Justin, I'm doing the best I can to stay open for the. 550 plus employees that I have around the country, knowing that they really need us to, to stay open so that they can take care of their families. And like you guys were saying, you know, uh, doing everything possible we can to keep our, our people safe. So even today, you looked at none of us are in the same room. 10,000 square feet here of office space at Sunny's. I don't think there's 10 of us here. Uh, my people in, in the uh, back of the factory uh, can't work in teams together anymore, have to stay. In fact, we're not even staying six feet apart. We're going further than that. So we're doing everything we can to, to keep them safe, but like you guys are saying, hopefully to keep the doors open. Uh, I think what we're doing, uh, and Justin, I agree with you, I think that clean cars right now are essential. When they say that this, uh, this germ can stay alive on metal and plastic for days, uh, I do think that we're uh, providing a great service right now. So that's how I see it anyway. And uh, like I said, I, I plan to try to do everything I can to, to keep the doors open. Bob, did you have some questions that came in so far? I do, let's get rolling. All right. With people who made who've turned off their vacuums but are still operating, how are you handling customers, mostly unlimited, who want a refund or to pay less because they're not getting all their services? Let me start that question off with Marcus Kittrell, please. You know, we went to every other vacuum, um, and then uh, and so we we still have our most of our lanes are are still open, uh, but it, we've cut it down to where there's no more than ten. So you know, twenty lanes is our normal set up we've gone to half and just every other lane and so we haven't quite experienced some of the unlimited club customers just canceling for that reason but uh you know if we have to shut them down i'm sure we'll have to to address that i i think in this time of crisis right now that you know if a customer wants that a refund or, or not used i think we have to we have to do that in order to save ourselves down the road uh, you know you know we always say no contract you know, it's, you know, pay every month. And so we need to be good stewards of this right now and be able to, uh, if the customer's not happy, you know, what do you do? You take care of the customer. And 
right now, if they're not happy with cutting half the vacuums or cutting the vacuums off, then I think you need to, you know, you need to address that. All right. Justin, same question, please. Yeah, we, we closed our vacuums. Um, we, we closed them all. We tried to thought about doing the every other one. But uh, what worries us is our governor specifically said he wants no more than groups of 10 in an area and even every other vacuum at 30 vacuums you could have a mob of people during the week or mob of people on the weekends and we just didn't want to draw a lot of attention and we just figured for the safety of the employees and customers we turned the vacuums off for now and we've had very little very little comments about it. we've had a few people say hey why are the vacuums closed you tell them hey it's for we're trying to participate in the social distancing and following the orders of the government and then everybody's been pretty pretty understandable with it so um, of course we like everything open but right now we feel um, it's better to draw less attention and keep everybody safe. So we're going to leave them off for the uh, for the uh, for the time being and and see what happens from there. All right, <clears throat> let's go to a happier note. Let's talk about car washing. Let's let's talk about equipment and s some things that uh, we, we normally like to talk about at trade shows. Just for a minute, <laughs> let me direct this to Trent Walter. Trent, because I know that this is you. If money was not an option, which it isn't for Trent Walter. <laughs> what, what is the ideal? What is the ideal? Glad you didn't ask me. <laughs> what, what is the ideal tunnel size and why, Mr. Walter? Uh, I'd say probably 180 foot. Um, I'd probably want uh, a couple dozen free vacuum spots. Um, going back to some of the things Paul talked about in his opening speech, the convenience for the customer, speed, getting them through. We're in a society of now. Um, people don't like to wait. So if you can have that three pay stations or four pay station lanes with two membership lanes, you know, the 180 foot tunnel enables you to put more equipment in there, faster throughput. Um, you know, I'd, I'd really go towards convenience. Uh, so that, that would be my answer. JT, how about you? I mean, yeah, you, you know, the historical thought has always been bigger is better for sure. Um, and you know, now we're competing a little bit differently than we have in the past because, you know, with the unlimited wash, it's more about the, the network, right? So it's, you know, back in the day, you know, we used to always look for the, the very best site. You'd, you'd build one or two units and, uh, you know, my first wash was 200 feet. I had a double tunnel that had 250 foot conveyors on it. But now where you're looking to really try to maximize your network and your unlimited wash membership, you can go much smaller. You know, you can get onto sites where you put a hundred to 120 foot uh, conveyor on them and you're really just trying to fill a need for, uh, you know, a hole that you might have with your membership network. So, you know, I guess if you had a, a default, we're probably about 150 feet. Uh, you know, 180 is fantastic. We love, you know, longer tunnels, but, you know, yeah, again, it really just is, is, is changing now kind of the way because of the way we compete. I like the way you guys are talking, 180 footers. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, question to, to Ollie, I guess. What is the number one most important factor in operating a successful car wash? Justin, let's start with you again, please. Uh, location, location, location. I think that's still number one. I mean, uh, we've been all over this country, all over this world, and you have a, a great operator in a poor location, he can survive. You have a bad operator in a great location and he does well. You put a great operator in a great location and you have a key to success. So I still think location's number one. And uh, we all talk all the time at all these shows and all the magazines and we study it all the time, which what makes a good location and what doesn't. And um, I, I don't think there is a magic formula 100%. I've been to some locations that on the surface, we have one that uh, Paul's dad even said one time he would have never built. It's been a great spot for us. I think you need to know your area. I think you need to look at a lot of factors, but um, I think uh, location still number one. And then you got to lay the site out right. And Sunny's is very good at helping with that, laying things out right to make sure it has good flow. Make sure you you can put too much on one site. And I found that too. And I know the last question he answered is longer is better. Sure, we have everything from 190 foot conveyors down to 110s, but you got to make sure site flows right. And more is not always better. So um, my number one thing is, is is location. Don't don't uh, make sure you pick the right spot. Make sure you do your homework. Make sure things work well. And I think that's number one for success. All right. I, I'm a, I, I'm in agreement on that myself. I think location is the, is the biggest factor. Marcus, what do you think? Yeah, no question location, uh, but also training your people. I mean, that's probably the, the one thing that we focus on a lot as well. But um, 
I agree with everything Justin said. I mean, you've got to have, I've seen some sites that you said, man, I'm not sure if they're going to make it and they're, they're doing great. And then you say, man, why, why isn't this location washing more? And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm never surprised about a location to be honest anymore. Uh, unlimited wash clubs have changed it a little bit. Um, you know, I've seen some guys take some B sites that are doing pretty good with them because of the clubs, but, um, you know, I, th I still think, you know, retail and clubs together, uh, you know, location is number one. Your people are, all, you know, are number two. Trent? Uh, well, I agree with what uh, both of them said. Uh, one thing I'd add in is, uh, and it's been a, something we've been talking about a lot for the last year, is culture. Culture within your organization. If you can develop a, a good culture within your organization, it'll flow through to customer service, operations, uh, HR functions, things of that nature. So, uh, you know, having a very strong culture within an organization is, is important. And, you know, this panel up here, everybody's uh, operating several car washes. So having a, a good, strong culture that's bred through all of them, you know, that's, that's why everybody on this panel today is so successful. Agreed. JT, what's your secret? <laughs> Man, after those three brilliant minds, it's hard to add anything to that, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, locations you know, is, is obviously a, a major factor, training your people, your culture. And then you start getting down to the probably the less important things, but they're still important. Your flow, um, you know, pricing is a component of it as well. Uh, just the details, keeping sites clean, keeping uh, all of your equipment running, um, just the, the show and the experience. Because people come to car washes not just to get their car clean, but it it's an experience for them as well. And it's a, uh, it makes them feel good. So, you know, part of it, it, it fills another need. So I think, you know, there's a lot of little details that people overlook and, you know, you, you walk on a site and you walk past something that might be wrong 20 times and you, you just com completely become blind to it. So, you know, you really want to look at the small things and, you know, try to take a, the, the, the eyes of your customer and, and look at your site, make sure that what they're seeing is, you know, up, up to your, you know, high standards. All right, JT, I'm going to give you, throw this question directly to you. Right. So, you know, you don't feel left out again and have to get. Okay. The, 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 <laughs> well, I keep going behind those great one. minds. So, you know, just put me at the end. Well, now, now I'm going to let you prove to you whether you're really smart or not. Okay. You get to go uh -oh. first. <laughs> <laughs> We're in trouble. I know a lot We're of people. We're all in trouble there. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people Here to are make talking. Marcus and Justin, those guys look good. So, <laughs> a lot of people are putting in belts. <clears throat> What's your take on them? Oh gosh, you know we have this uh, internal argument all the time. We own uh, several sites with belts, um, and you know some guys love them, uh, and and I think they work great. I mean, I, I, honestly, if you want to know my honest opinion, I think the jury's still out. Is it really, you know, is the juice worth the squeeze? As they say, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, people say you can load them faster, but damn, we, we've loaded cars pretty fast on a, uh, just a good old, uh, log chain, uh, conveyor. So, uh, they look good. I think they, they definitely up the appeal of a site. So there's certainly that, you know, is there a return on that? I, I, I just, I'm not quite sure. At your sites with belts, are you also offering tire shine? Uh, we are, you know, and you know, that becomes a little bit, you know, you have to push it towards the end. And I guess there's some equipment they say is coming out to kind of overcome that. But, you know, as it stands today, that's, you know, you could say that's one of the weaknesses of the, of the belt. Trent, what's your opinion on belts versus conveyors? Um, I agree with him. I think the jury's still out. Uh, we just recently put our first two in and, uh, haven't started those sites up. So, um, We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of experience with that, so uh, I have to defer to the panel. Okay. Let me go to Marcus. Marcus, what changes do you see coming for express operators over the next five-year period? Um, you know, the equipment's always changing. You know, you, you always see a lot of really good equipment upgrades. But probably the the thing that, that I, we see coming up the, the most is, is better uh, club. I mean, you know, memberships. That's where uh, we think everything's headed to, uh, even with, uh, you know, what we're in now. I mean, if it wasn't for the club business right now, I'm sure several operators would be in trouble, including us. And so, uh, uh, you know, I, 
I think better enhancement for uh, technology for clubs is coming. Um, I've seen the, the LPR, I know Sonny's has that and some other vendors as well. But, uh, you know, we, we think it's going to come in the, uh, in the club uh, portion of our business. It's going to probably make the biggest jump in our industry. You ever see the, the industry going to club only? Any, any watches just going to ex exclusively to club? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, that wouldn't surprise me a bit. Um, you know, I think that, you know, it's not, I don't think it's in the next five years, but I do think it's coming. Uh, I would not be surprised. I think there's some actually guys actually doing that. Oh, really? Um, yeah. And so, uh, but that wouldn't surprise me. Mr. Alford, what are we looking at in the next five years? Well, it's kind of hard to say. I, I'm kind of anxious to see how this virus thing changes the industry. You know, if we had this conversation two months ago, I don't think any of us predicted this and thought that the, the car wash business was wide open, was going to stay wide open. So it's going to be interesting to see how this changes the industry. I think chemistry changes have been great. I mean, I think look at the chemistry we're using now with the products you guys make and a lot of people in the market. I mean, I think we're getting the cleanest, driest, shiniest cars we've ever gotten in the history of the car wash business. So that's exciting. I think blower technology, we've been lagging industry-wide for many years and I, I think there's some nice things coming out there I'm looking forward to so I, I think technology is going to continue to improve it to get us cleaner dry shiny cars and I agree with Marcus the club plan we'll see how that thing plays out I have heard of car washes right now I think there's quite a few doing clubs only during this during this this pandemic so we'll see how that works out so it's ex exciting things coming up I really want to see how this virus thing changes thing like um you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. If this goes on too long, this could really put a, a, a slowdown or a, a crippling of the economy. We just have to see how this turns out. But uh, as far as technology goes, chemistry, um, blowers, those things, I, I think that's going to continue to develop and really exciting to see where that leads us in the next few years. All right. JT, you ever consider going cashless? Uh, well, today we decided to go cashless in our Kansas City operations, but, you know, that was obviously for uh, pandemic reasons. Um, no, I can't say at this point, but, you know, in terms of uh, tagging on to what Marcus was talking about in terms of technology, I think the, you know, how we pay and uh, in the future is definitely going to change. Um, and, you know, hopefully, it, it, you know, things get a lot simpler in terms of, you know, payment methodology, but I don't know, maybe I'm a little old school, but I, I have a hard time seeing us, you know, hundred percent moving away from cash. I agree on that. I got a question for Mike Ford. Mike, you still with me? Yeah, just waking up. Okay. <laughs> Mike, reading on a car wash forum that Wells Fargo closed a loan window for SBA relief program. Do you know if this is true? It's what, what I just heard. Somebody called me right after my, um, presentation and said that they're a Wells Fargo customer and they're closed out. They're closed out. What does that mean? Uh, I think that Wells Fargo put uh, only a certain amount of money available and they put it out to their existing customers first. Uh, it, this is my guess. I can't say this for a fact. And um, they used up the money that they wanted to a lot towards the program. So um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens? There are a number of financial institutions that are putting limits on this and they're limiting it to their uh, existing customer base. So I, I would strongly suggest um, applying, if you're, if you're planning on getting any of the CARES payroll protection plan money, I do it today, tomorrow at the latest. Yeah, the urgency is there. That's, that's yeah. definitely, uh, no doubt. All right, let me see here. Let me go back to, uh, Marcus, because I know he's big on training. I know all you guys are big on training, but you know what I like best is when I, I look at some of the, the things online and I always see Marcus's group cleaning their tunnel. Every, was it, every Tuesday night, Marcus, from yep. 9 to 11 o'clock or something, man, those, those tunnels are the cleanest. In fact, I, I use your, your tunnels as an example. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> uh, but no, I use your no. tunnels as an example in Car Wash College to show what a tunnel should look like that's, that washes a lot of cars. So what are a few small things you can do to train your staff to, de to deliver that type of, uh, how, do you, how do you get them to buy in like that? You know, uh, we started this a couple of years ago um, and we, we were trying to find a solution. You know, we've had some really good maintenance programs that come out, but it was, 
it was like, okay, let's do this on a Monday night and this on a Wednesday, this on a Thursday. And we decided let's, let's condense everything and bring our whole team in, have a safety meeting. Let's start with, um, and then, then segment out each, uh, each person with a, with a responsibility. And it just kind of grew. Now we've cut back hours on, on it. Now we can't keep them out that late because of some of the curfews we have, but right. we're still continuing on with that, even through the, the pandemic right now. Um, but, uh, the buy-in is culture. Uh, you know, one of the guys, I think JT or somebody, uh, or Trent, uh, talked about that earlier is, uh, about the culture. And, uh, we really try to get everybody, the, the key is getting everybody involved. You know, not just the manager, but also little Johnny that we just hired two weeks ago. You know, he can have a responsibility of cleaning vacuums or, or, or something like that. So we, we kind of, we, we map it out. It's actually a schedule we run for that. I mean, not just a weekly schedule to work, but it's also a, 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 a Tuesday night schedule that we put together every week for them to clean. And um, it, it's, um, you know, we use, you know, I think we budgeted 10 man hours for that night. Um, and no, we normally buy pizza and then we have a safety meeting and, and kind of do all that. But, uh, you know, we, we think it's important, uh, but that's how you get them to buy in is feeding pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to work. And so, uh, I'll, say I'll show up. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then the biggest thing it has to be planned. You can't just show up and say, all right, you go, you go grease the tunnel, you go clean this. It needs to be typed out and needs to have, you, you need to direct that part of it. Uh, and that's a lot of things we picked up from the Carl Wash College, to be honest, is um, there's a plan for it. And we just kind of taken those materials and say, OK, let's let's try to make it our own. And uh, but everybody is everybody is assigned a job to do. And some of them get them done in 30 minutes. Some of them get them done in, in an hour. But uh, everybody's assigned assigned a job. All right. Justin, you got some real high volume locations. How do you how do you keep your places so nice and clean? Hey, hey, the, Marcus said it, it's culture. And I think most of our people understand they'll if I walk, they'll, they won't, they'll never see me walk by a piece of paper, and not not pick it up. And that's just the way we operate. That's what we expect. And years ago, I heard a story about Dr. Toyota in, in the 80s when he was competing with General Motors and everybody talked about the quality of Toyota. Toyota in their factories had everybody wear white gloves. And they asked him, when do you stop the line? They said, well, if you see any grease or dirt on your white gloves, stop the line immediately and find out what's wrong. So it's the same approach with us. We expect it, including myself, my dad, everybody. No one walks by a piece of paper and not picks it, pick it up. It's just expected. And you work on it all the time. I tell everybody, when you build a car wash, you're going to work on it the first day you put it in. You're going to work on it the last day you close it. So it's just culture, like Marcus said. We do it. We expect our people, and we live it too. From the owner to the to the the top to the bottom, we all live in, in a clean environment, and we we just expect it. And you go in our equipment rooms; they they should be clean all the time, and that's just part of the way we live, part of the way we do things. And I think it's a cultural thing for sure. All right, I got to tell you, from the, all four of you guys, when I go into your your locations, uh, it's it's refreshing to see people who take cleanliness so seriously. Then you, some of the things we go into are, are just horror stories, but I, I won't go into that. JT, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. Here, let me see. If you could go back in time, ten years, what would you do differently in the car wash business? Whew. Uh, I mean, that's a good question. It's, uh, you know, again, looking out at how the uh, unlimited plans have changed the, 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 the growth of the market, and the, the unit economics, uh, you know, probably looking at, you know, some sites in a little bit more smaller areas would be uh, some of the things that I would do. But I don't know. It's a good, it's a good question. I think, you know, in terms of, uh, Technology, you know, we're as a operator, we're kind of, you know, we're just a user of whatever is available, and unfortunately, we're seeing, you know, Sunny's and DRB and a lot of these guys are trying to up the level of technology that's out there. Um, you know, when we first started doing the unlimited wash, you know, it was with a, a spreadsheet and a barcode scanner. We used to have to open up the doors because there was no technology in it. So, I think, you know, in terms of, you know. 10 years to up to this point, I think the, the technology as we've started to integrate it in more, I think has been a big help. 
Um, you know, the, 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 the chemistry has definitely been a, a big improvement as well. Um, so I, I don't know, we're, we try to make the best of what we have available to us. And fortunately we're seeing, you know, vendors are, are really, you know, trying to up the level of quality that they're delivering to us. So that, that definitely helps. Hey, Brent, same Brent, question. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I, I agree with you, JT. And I'm not going to say um, it's become easy, but it's become easier. I agree. We have better things at our disposal between equipment and chemistry. Uh, Justin, what you were saying before about, you know, what's going to happen next. Uh, I don't know that any of us know for sure how this is going to change things. But going back over the last 10 years, if you saw what I was saying uh, first thing this morning in my presentation, the only thing that surprises me is how long it took for Express to take off. Um, just so most of you people out there know, you look at Justin, you look at Marcus, these guys started uh, building Expresses in 2001. So here we are, what, 19 years later, and all of a sudden you see the last four or five years how this thing is starting to explode. I mean, it took 15 years for this thing to really catch on, I, except in the Southeast, right, where you guys started. You look at other areas like the Northeast, it's just really just getting going, out West it's getting going, the middle of the country. So here we are 19 years later, and now we see this, you know, this, this upward curve as to what's going on in the marketplace. So the only thing that really surprised me then is you, watching you guys back then and, and knowing what I saw from knowing the inner workings of your companies. Um, I'm shocked it took this long for people to discover just how great this business can be. Trent Walter, go back in time 10 years. What do you do different? Oh, 10 years ago, I couldn't get out of my own way. So, um, you know, we didn't build our first tunnel until uh, open it till November of 16. So if I could go back, I, I mean, all the real estate opportunities that we lost out on, uh, maybe, you know, be more aggressive about getting more sites open. I would say that would, uh, that'd be the number one goal. So. Yeah, Trent, really your background was more in the self-serve side of the industry in Inbay, right? Yeah, I was going to save the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then you saw the light. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we evolved very quickly um, as a business, very quickly, you know, um, to be able to put up 14 locations, got more coming this year, and in just over three years, uh, it's taken a lot of, a lot of hard work. So, um, you know, again, if, if I could go back and pick up a couple more years, boy, I wish I could. All right, Trent, I'm going to stick with you and let you go first on this one. What additional services do you think you'll be able to add to give your customers more value? I mean, I, it's changing every day. I mean, I go to some of your guys' sites and you're already putting out free towels and glass cleaner and all-purpose cleaner and uh, air fresheners. What's, what's left to give away? Um, well, you know, going back to, I think JT may have said about, you know, just options for payment. I think that's going to be huge, but, um, again, you know, to your point, so we give a towel and air freshener away with every wash. Um, I think the, you know, the coronavirus is obviously going to change the way we do business. Um, I can see that expanding into some kind of sanitizer or, or something of, of that nature. So, you know, whether it's a, a you know, a sanitizing dash wipe or something of that nature, I think that'll help incentivize uh, people to join memberships or, or pick up memberships or, or, you know, get into club programs. So um, I definitely see, you know, again, the, the coronavirus has changed the way we do business and that's going to probably add to those things. Justin, same question. I know you guys do a lot cross, uh, cross marketing between your lubes and your C stores and your gas and everything else with your car wash. Um, what other ways can you provide value to your customers and keep them on your lots? Well, I mean, we've considered all the things that they talked about. The one thing I think we need to keep in mind is, though, is I don't want to let what I call the gimmicks get in the way of what they're there for. And we want to make sure we're turning out a fast, clean, dry car. And I think sometimes you can do more and make – I don't want to slow the process down. I want to make sure we execute well. I think the number one reason people come in is the value – and the speed and if, if things are going to get in the way. So we're real cautious to add, not to add too many things that, that slow down the whole process. We want to keep our eye on the ball and make sure we're still getting those cars through quick, speedy and uh, turn out a good quality. So we still do interiors. We're from a full service background. We still do interiors. We offer that service. We still do oil changes. We still do, we have some convenience stores and gas. So we still offer a lot of things, but um, we do the free vacuums. Uh, I know a lot of people are getting more and more. They're giving away towels and air fresheners and all of these things. And we haven't gone to those just yet, just because we don't want to, we don't want to mess the process up. We want to execute very well what we do. 
you know, one time there was full service gas stations and now I hear some people going back to full service in, in this crisis time, but we just want to be careful that we don't, um, we don't take away from, from our original goal and that's to be the cheapest, fastest and best uh, express car wash we can. So we're, we're cautious what we add and what we subtract one. Fair enough. All right, back to Mike Ford. Mike, another question on finance came in. Mike, have not heard back from the community bank on my PPP, PPP loan. Can I apply with more than one lender? That's a good question. Um, I've had uh, a number of people ask me that uh, same question. And the answer is, yeah, you probably could. Um, uh, obviously, as soon as you hear back from the first one, you, you might want to cancel out your other other applications. The, the challenge that, that people are finding out is that either one, like, like in the uh, question earlier, Wells Fargo's ran out of money. Well, if you apply through them, you're not getting the money. Um, or at least not now. And so it would certainly make a lot of sense to look at other avenues. I, I'm not big on multiple applications, but in this case, when there's a very limited resource, it may make sense. All right, good enough. All right, guys, back to a car wash question. Let's go to JT. JT, can you ever have enough free vax and is there a right or wrong number? Ooh, more the merrier, that's for sure. Um, you know, we have sites with as many as, you know, 40 uh, vacuums and I don't know, I think we like a lot of them. So I will tell you, you know, it just depends on the, the, the volume that you're going to do. I mean, obviously the bottleneck is going to hit on a busy Saturday and that's when people are waiting. So it is nice uh, and you know, just kind of trailing some of the things that have been said in terms of, you know, People just want, you know, they, they want, they, they come to us for convenience, you know, speed and a quality, uh, quality product, but, you know, they don't want to have to wait for a vacuum. So, you know, I think it's better to err on too many than too few. That's for sure. Let me ask that same question of Marcus. Marcus, I, I recall one of your locations early on, maybe back in the early 2000s, that you had what, maybe six free vacuums at the site at the time? Yeah, it was our very first Express. Uh, it was a full service converted to an Express. Uh, we had six free vacuum lanes washing 15,000 cars a month, and you could vacuum before or after. Um, so it was absolutely, I wouldn't even drive by the crawl wash. I, I hate to even look <laughs> over there because it was so crazy half the time. Um, but, you know, so, it worked out. And then, uh, matter of fact, we, we were able to add eight back in 05 or 06 because the um, – the city council member that kept denying us access to, to for more vacuums was one of our customers and finally got fed up having to wait on a vacuum. <laughs> What's it going to take? I said, all I need is these, these plans approved right here and we're good to go. I, I literally got them approved the next week. And, uh, and so we were able to add eight more. So uh, still, that's a tight site. It's a half acre lot, uh, it's a 93 foot tunnel. And, um, and so, um, but yeah, I mean, as far as vacuums go, I, I agree with JT. I think you can, you can have some, we have some that have 40, um, you know, lanes. Then we have some that have, you know, uh, 14, I think is the minimum we have. Um, but uh, my typical layouts normally been 125 foot uh, conveyor with 20 to 24 lanes. That's about property we can find to, to, to build on. So, uh, but yeah, I think sometimes in some markets, you definitely need more. Yeah. And then some markets, I think you can get by with, with less. All right. I got five minutes left. I'm going to go to our guest panelists right now, and I'm going to ask Marcus Kittrell. Marcus, what do you tell a guy who's looking at the car wash business from outside right now, trying to get his first site going? What do you, what do you tell that guy about the industry? You know, uh, it's funny. I mean, we, we get calls all the time about people wanting to get in, first-timers. You know, I, I tell them, I, I love this industry. I've been doing it my whole life uh, since I was right out of high school or working one at a full service when I was in high school. Um, but, um, you know, be patient. Talk to as many operators as you can. This is one of the few industries I always hear that you can, you can go talk to an operator, learn something, and they'll tell you, you know, about the business and say, hey, you know, you might want to avoid this or do this. And, um, and so I, that's advice I always give someone is, you know, we always welcome them to come to our site and hang out for a day, see if it's a business they would even like. Uh, 
Uh, sometimes, you know, they, I said, you know, this is every day. Like I think Justin said, you know, you're going to work on the, the very first day till you, you know, when you open them up till, till you get rid of them. And so, um, you know, you have to be committed to this industry, but it's a, it's a great industry. Um, and that's what I tell people, you know, I'm going to reflect back to Paul real quick. Paul said, you know, we help each other when in times of crisis and he's so right. I mean, I can't tell you how many times Sonny's has stepped up for me personally uh, when we needed stuff done, uh, Anthony's built stuff for us, shipped stuff to us. Um, but you know, we've got a distributor in our area that's shorthanded right now. And so we're getting ready to help them install a tunnel that's on one of our, that's going to be a direct competitor of us, literally two miles down the street, but we're going to help them install the equipment because they're shorthanded. Um, hopefully one day we'll own that crawl wash. But, uh, um, but what I don't do for that, we do because we help each other out. And so, uh, you know, I just tell people it's a great industry. We have great people in our industry. And so it's none like anything I know of. All right, Justin, same question, please. What do you tell somebody new? And I know I've, I used to, when I was your sales rep in Louisiana for a long time, I, I could always send people to Baton Rouge and you guys are welcome them with open arms. Yeah, and, and we still do, and we try to help a lot of people. We have, we, we tell them the truth, and, and we tell them, look, here's the good and here's the bad. My dad used to say, everybody comes by on Christmas Eve and says, wow, it's a great industry to be in, but they never come by when it's raining. So we tell them both sides of the coin that it, it is a great industry. It's an industry that if you embrace, that you, if you grow with, and and you, you take under your wing, you work hard, it works. But the, but it's not all just hit the green button to go and the red button to stop. There's a lot involved to it. Make sure you do your homework. And the risk is getting higher. The cost to build a facility nowadays is, I still can't believe how much it costs. So it's getting a lot more risky. It's getting more competitive. And um, there's some people that don't need to be in the industry. So I think we've talked as many out as we have to help get in it. So I would suggest make sure you do your homework, make sure you do your research, make sure you, you go to the shows, you meet people, and you really research and make sure you want to do because it is a big gamble. It is risky. And um, for us, it's been really rewarding. And it is our family, everybody on this panel here, I, I consider friends and could call any of them anytime I wanted. And it's been a lot of fun and rewarding for us. And we love every minute of it, but it's not for everybody. I just want to make sure that the person understands that and they know what they're getting into and tell them the truth before before they dive in and make the wrong decision if they make the right decision. We want to help them all. We're like Marcus. We're here to help everyone, and anybody needs a hand, we've always tried to do that. And um, It's been great for us and look forward to many more years. JT, you've been on the distribution side. You've been on the operator side. What do you tell somebody new coming into the industry these days? Um, you know, listen, exactly what, uh, these guys have just said. I mean, it, it is a big, uh, investment more so now than ever. So, you know, I think, you know, it's not a great investment if you're just, you know, purely looking for a passive investment, like, you know, car wash is a real work, right? I mean, you know, you've got to train people, you've got culture, you've got things that go down. I mean, it's, you know, I started in the car wash business literally 19 years ago with, you know, self-serve and in-bay automatics. And, you know, that was a lot more, you know, kind of hands-off and people, you know, love those businesses because they were kind of a, a sweat equity side, you know, side gig for them. But, you know, an express car wash is a lot of work. Like we have great operations guys. I mean, I, I just look at what they do every day and, and it's real work. So I, you know, I try to give people a, a real uh, overview. And as a distributor, we do the same thing. We would talk probably as many people out of going into the business because you know the last thing you want to do is put a you know your whole life savings or put your name on a uh, on a loan that you're personally guaranteeing and it's really not a business that you're you want to be in or you know that much about but you you think oh you can you know throw something up and make a ton of money so I think the first thing I try to do is really give people uh, some insight into the the life and and the day of a car washer, which is, you know, again, it's, it's real work every day. It's real work. Yeah, that's, that's for certain mm -hmm. guys. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. Mike Ford, Marcus Kittrell, John Thompson, JT, Trent, Justin, we appreciate you guys being here. We appreciate you guys, all you do for Sonny's, et cetera. And if you guys don't mind hanging around for just a couple of minutes, I'm going to give away something worth 20 grand right now, which wow. is one of us. Throw the name in the hat. <laughs> oh, I took all y'all out. Uh, you, guys, you guys got removed. <laughs> that, that nice arch. You guys can see all that good yeah. stuff. You get all the foam and stuff. You get the 
Dosatrons, yeah. you get the Windmasters, you get the big arch, all this fancy stuff and the chemistry. And we're going to ship it to you for free. Everything's free here at Sunny State. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Bob, you're going to give Anthony a heart attack. It's, okay. it's <laughs> enough, uh, all right. And the winner of the $20,000 Ceramic X3 Bonanza Prize is Corey Rommel at Dirty Dave's Car Wash. Wow. So, Corey right. Rommel. Congratulations, Corey. Great Corey, night. congratulations. Wow. Awesome. All right. Again, I'd like to thank our panelists. I'd like to thank everybody who participated in, in today's event. Don't forget, we're back here tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. live uh, with a lot more good car wash stuff for you folks. So, uh, again, thanks for joining us at Virtual Car Wash Expo. I'm Bob Fox. Have a great evening. See you all tomorrow. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, thanks Bob. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.